So it's good to learn a little bit more about the bike library so everyone knows they are looking for volunteers and for donations. So you should definitely stop by the bike library and check that out. We want to welcome Officer Hewlett today. We wanted to learn a little bit more about bike safety. So thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for, for being me. here. Talk a little bit about, first, before we go into the safety issues, talk a little bit about being a bike officer. Well, I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a lot of fun to get out and meet people and other people that are on bicycles and talk to them. And, and uh, this community is very friendly that way, I think, and, and it's enjoyable to, to get out and get some exercise, too. Yeah. How long has Iowa City had bike officers? Do you know? Uh, I think around 10 years. Okay. Maybe a little longer. That's great. Right. Yeah. How many bike offices are, are, are on duty at a time? Usually not more than one or two at a time. Special events, there may be up to four, maybe even six. Uh, the July 4th fireworks is one example. We oh, have yeah. several bicycle officers. Is it easier for bike officers to get around downtown than for cars? I, I imagine it might be. Um, I think if you're downtown and, and patrolling, you could do it just as well on a bike. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I think so, and I've done that. And, uh, uh, if you can go through the alleys and cut through here and there, and sometimes, yes, it is quicker than even a car. So. Sure. Well, so I know that I've been stopped by a bike officer <laughs> before <laughs> on my bicycle and had no idea that I was breaking the law at that moment. And, and um, I think the first time was like 10 years ago in college, and uh, the paint had faded on the, the, the sign on the right there on the bricks on the ped mall that said no bikes allowed. And I just, I was new to town and I didn't know. Uh, but what are some of the other things that mm -hmm. people, uh, laws that people break on a regular basis? That's a good question because that's kind of our major complaints for bikes will be the downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the Ped Mall, which has its own set of laws. And then you have the, what we call the Central Business District, which has its own set of laws. Uh, the Central Bus Business District starts at Jefferson, goes all the way down to Burlington, and then is from Capitol over to Gilbert. So that whole entire area downtown, uh, you can't ride your bike on the sidewalk. Okay. And that's, that's the biggest complaint. Uh, mm. We have people getting hit when they're just trying to walk down the sidewalk and a bicyclist will hit them. So uh, that's obviously a big complaint. So you can't ride your bike down there on the sidewalk. You have to ride it just like a car. And, and which is true throughout the, the whole town is you have to operate your vehicle or operate your bicycle as a vehicle on the street. So if there's a red light, you have to stop for the red light. If there's a stop sign, you have to stop for the stop sign. So downtown especially, if they're on the streets obeying the laws, then that's good. And we try to get that to happen, but that doesn't always happen. But uh, And the, the one ways as well. Um, I think of Washington Street down here in the 200 block. You know, see a lot of bicyclists going the wrong way on that, trying to get through town. Sure. One of the um, the dangers of riding on the sidewalk, I imagine, if you're, you're not expecting a pedestrian to be moving at that rapid of a pace and suddenly somebody shoots out from the sidewalk and say you're turning right off of Burlington onto one of the side streets and you know somebody just shoots right out of there that could be really dangerous I think sometimes people don't feel very safe on on the roads here but what are our safety statistics like here are people doing a good job of staying safe on the roads on I think bikes? so um, I actually talked to someone in planning that uh, had tried about the mid 90s I believe to actually go through and plot bicycle access and see if they could do something about the number of accidents and reduce it. He said they stopped keeping track because they were so infrequent mm -hmm. that it really was a waste of their time. So there really wasn't anything they could do to help out that way. Um, you talk about the, the, the bikes pulling out on the street. There's on Burlington Street, um, as you go down Burlington, that's actually where we've had most of our, that I can remember, most of our more serious bike accidents would be bicycles on a sidewalk, which that's part of the CBD, so they're not supposed to be on the sidewalk there. And so they're going either east or west. We've had both. And a car is on Burlington, doesn't really see them. But then as they're going to turn, say, up Lynn Street, they're looking for pedestrians. They're not looking for bicyclists to be coming off the sidewalk. And so then we have collisions there. So that's, that's a concern for us, and, and that's one reason you know they shouldn't be on the sidewalk there is because they think they have the walk, so they can just go flying through, mm -hmm. right. and a car doesn't look for that. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. It's, um, it's interesting to see the bikers out on the street and some people are just in their regular day-to-day -day gear and other people are wearing reflectors and bright colors and, and helmets. Are there any laws that pertain to the clothing that you're supposed to be wearing when you ride a bicycle? No, there's really not any laws. Um, obviously, helmets are highly recommended. 
Uh, but not required. Not required. Okay. No. And obviously during the daytime, you know, the reflective, uh, the bright oranges, the bright greens, the fluorescent greens are great. Some people I've seen, you can tell they ride every day to work. You know, those people that are really the diehard bicyclists, like maybe even this winter you saw, which mm -hmm. is incredible. Mm -hmm. But um, they'll have maybe just a light vest, a safety vest that they've got. They just put it on when they go to work. And it's it's just really easy to see them because they're so brightly colored. And so that's a good idea, I think, as well. At night, it is required that you have a headlight, and, and you need one to be able to see where you're going. And if you and with the technology now, the, the lights, there's there's inexpensive lights that you can get that you can see where you're going, and cars can see you. And the LEDs, the flashing red LEDs, you've probably seen those. Mm -hmm. I I was on Church Street yesterday, and three blocks ahead of me were three guys on bikes, and I could see them for three blocks away. And they had those lights; they're flashing, and that's going to get your attention, and you're going to see it. So. I think, and those just don't cost that much money. There's no reason not to be safe and, and be able to be seen. And, and the reflective clothing now that's out there at night, if you're at, at night, that's that's obviously a concern. And those are some things people can do. So headlights are required, but taillights aren't at night. Reflectors only are required. Okay. So if you and all bikes come with reflectors, right. you know, on, on the back. So so you're going to have that, but but the flashing LEDs I think are fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of bicyclists in dark clothing, without any lights on their bike, bicyclists, and um, maybe coasting a little bit through intersections. So it makes it a mm -hmm. challenge if you're in a vehicle to see them at night, it especially does. if it's uh, dark and rainy or something like right. that. Right. It really does. So the other component is obviously the drivers. Sure. And any tips for the yeah. drivers on sharing the road? Um, Relax and, <laughs> and don't let yourself get mad. I, we hear you hear it from both sides, and, and a lot of drivers complain that the bicyclists, you know, are taking up the whole lane. They can't get through, and if they're late for work, that just puts more stress on them to try to get around them, and and they they don't like that, and and they think the bicyclists are doing it on purpose, you know, trying to think and they own the road. <laughs> That's the biggest complaint. Oh, you know, they own the road. Well, they don't really own the road, but maybe they do. It's like. You know, so that's a big complaint. And so people in cars need to need to relax and, and give them some space. Um, they're not gonna go away. This is a town that a lot mm. of people like to bicycle in, and, and I think that's great. And so they need to be safe. So stay away and, and just take take a few extra seconds to, to get around them. And from the bicyclist's point of view, you know, they're saying, well, all these cars are seeing how close they can get to me. I, they just are sure people are out to try to see how close <laughs> they can get to them. And, and it's a frustration. Uh, if you're on a bicycle, on bicycle and a, a car comes by you at 35 miles an hour, it's, you can tell if, if something happened that you accidentally went out in front of it, you would be hurting pretty bad. So, mm -hmm. so it's a concern. Um, the bicyclists are supposed to be single file and they're supposed to be over to the right and they aren't always doing that and so that's when the cars get mad and but the bicycles if they do that um, they're going to be safe and they'll be okay it's just the cars just need to relax a little bit and, and they can easily get around them. So. I thought bicyclists could take up the whole lane but but you're saying no. No the law says they're supposed to be over to the right. Uh -huh. Where all the potholes and sand is. Well and it, and, it, and it doesn't say they have to be right next to right as practical I think oh, as okay. code reads. So, okay. so right now with all the sand and the yeah. trash I mean there's a, I wouldn't want to ride in that. No, it's there's nails mess. there's everything over there on the, by the curb. Right. So they're going to have to be a foot or two off of the curb at least. Right. So that's another reason, you know, the cars need to just okay. give them some room. Oh, I'm glad you clarified that. Well, no, I think this is a testament to um, safety in Iowa City. When I first talked to Officer Hewlett about coming on the show, he suggested that in areas that you aren't allowed to ride on the sidewalks, that you, people should ride in the alleys. Oh. And that is a, a, a another way to just kind of get out of traffic and get to where you're going. And I just thought that was a really interesting uh, option. For riders, I, I often ride in the alleys, and outside of maybe a little stinkiness in the summertime, there they, they are. There's there's no traffic, and you can really cruise right, right through there. Especially the alley north of the library, on mm -hmm. the north side of the library. Right. It starts at Gilbert, uh, really in the in the Chauncey Swan Ram, mm -hmm. and goes all the way to Clinton. And so you can make all that distance up going through an alley where you don't have to worry about the cars. You have to cross Lynn and, mm -hmm. and, and watch out for pedestrians there at the Ped Mall. But um, I think that's a fantastic way, uh, especially for the people trying to go east to west, because we see them all the time going down Washington Street the wrong way. And so oh, yeah. they, right. we just, I'd rather see them in the alley half a block south of there. Sure. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. It's a really, really good suggestion. 